Hello, I'm Daisy Cousins. Welcome to This Week in Social Justice. This week's biggest and baddest social justice fails include Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her plan to give a pay rise to herself, why Men in Black international star Tessa Thompson has petitioned to change the name of the franchise to something more feminized, and depending on how long I feel like talking about the first two topics, we may even have time for a bonus topic. So let's get started. Everybody's least favorite Democratic Socialist, Alexandria Ocasio Red Cortez, has raised a few eyebrows by pushing for a pay rise for, well, herself. Recently, Democrats pulled a House spending package that would have included a $4,500 annual pay rise for members of Congress. This means an extra four and a half grand's worth of padding for the standard rank and file member's salary of $174,000 a year. Now, 174 grand is what you would call a significant salary for everyone, and certainly more than your average person, which is why so many people have balked at the fact that Red Cortez, alleged champion of the poor and fierce critic of the rich, is so keen to support this initiative and claimed any opposition to the proposition is superficial. You know, it may not be politically popular to say, but honestly, this is why there's so much pressure to turn to lobbying firms and to cash in on, on mm -hmm. member service after people leave because, um, because precisely of, of this issue. So it may be politically convenient and it may make you look good in the short term for saying, mm -hmm. oh, we're not voting for pay increases. Everybody should get uh, cost of living increases to accommodate for the changes in our economy. And then when we don't do that, it only increases the pressure on members to exploit loopholes, like insider trading loopholes, to make it on the back end. And, and, that, and that's my issue, is that it's superficial. You know, you can, you can vote against pay increases all you want. It's, in my opinion, voting against a pay, voting against a it's not even like a raise. Okay, so Red has raised a few not totally invalid arguments here. First, she cites the lobbyists and dark money that politicians apparently turn to in order to cover their costs when their salary doesn't cut it. She is, after all, well known for her criticism of dark money and corruption when it comes to campaign finances, so this proposed pay rise, in that case, is actually on brand for her in a roundabout way. Secondly, she's also raised the fact that as a condition of their position, members of Congress must maintain two households, one in Washington and the other in their own district. Since they don't get any housing perks, they have to pay two sets of rent or mortgage payments simultaneously and can't write any of it off as a work expense. However, they are given an office budget, which is currently somewhere in the $1.2 million to $1.38 million range. This is based on their distance from their district for the purposes of travel travel expenses and is also dependent on the number of people it contains. They can also travel at taxpayer expense on CODELs or congressional delegations for official business. So while housing is a big out-of-pocket expense, there are plenty of perks they get to cover other big costs. Also, think of it this way. The average median American income is $47,000 approximately. If you are a professional, your average income is about $66,000. And if you hold an advanced degree, your average wage per year is about nearly $82,000. If you double each of these salaries, you still will not reach the $174,000 Red Cortez is raking in per year, which puts her in the top 8% of workers. As such, if your everyday American is able to hypothetically maintain one household, all the while earning less than half of a member's salary, why would Red Cortez, who does not have children and has a partner who works as a web developer and therefore has at least some sort of income, have any trouble affording two households? Perhaps her frustration comes from the fact that she now lives in a luxury apartment complex in D.C. in which rents range from $1,840 a month for a studio, which I'm guessing she's not living in, to $5,200 a month for a three-bedroom. Now, this is quite a contrast to the average rent in D.C., which is about $1,300 for a one-bedroom and about $1,500 for a two-bedroom apartment. 
And aside from that, it is fairly ironic that Little Red is living in this building, considering it pointedly does not offer affordable housing, even though she campaigned on a platform that very much rallied against luxury apartment complexes because they drive up the rent in the area and push working class people out of neighborhoods. But, you know, whatever. All in all, I do get where this push for a congressional salary raise is coming from. Congress has, after all, been getting cost of living adjustments since 1989. It stopped getting one in 2009 for reasons including that it didn't really look very good, especially, I would assume, as it was during the global financial crisis, so this is not an unheard of thing. However, I'm not sure how a four and a half grand a year increase is going to make such a huge difference that members will stop with the dark money. And I'm also not sure how someone in Red's position, with no childcare expenses and a partner who I'm guessing pulls in a reasonable wage, who lives in a luxury apartment building, even though her campaign was intensely critical of luxury apartment buildings, and who talks about so-called wealth and income inequality on a semi-regular basis, is in any position to call for a pay rise for herself. In her own words, it's bad optics. It may not be great optics, it may not like look the best huge social justice fail on this one for sure So, as I'm guessing most of you know, the new film in the Men in Black franchise, entitled Men in Black International, has hit movie theaters. The franchise, which originally starred the lovely Will Smith and the lovely Tommy Lee Jones, enjoyed huge international success and cemented a firm place in popular culture. Oh my god, Tiffany. What? You're the Men in Black. <gasps> However, this new installment has a decidedly woke change to it. The Men in Black front duo now includes a woman. Tessa Thompson has taken on the Will Smith archetype, while Chris Hemsworth is the modern-day Tommy Lee Jones. Now, this is not the first instance of Hollywood shoving women into men's roles for the sake of supposedly empowering them. We saw it in the remake of Ghostbusters in 2016, where the four iconically male characters were replaced by Melissa McCartney, Kristen Wiig, Kate McKinnon, and Leslie Jones. Needless to say, the film was a bit of a flop, because funnily enough, most people don't really buy it when women in films are behaving like men. Anyway, during the black carpet premiere on Tuesday night, Tessa Thompson had a few words to say about the fact that the show now stars a woman, but the franchise is still called Men in Black. I don't, I don't mind the title, although if we do a couple more, I wouldn't mind. I thought I've, I've pitched some ideas like um, People in Black, but that would be P.I.B., which sounds like a sandwich. I pitched uh, Humans in Black, which would be H.I.B., which sounds... Like some, yeah. you know what I mean? It sounds like um, something you don't want to get. And then, I, I don't know, I, we'll see. I, I think we could maybe change the name at some point. Okay, here's the thing. I actually don't have any problem at all with Hollywood pushing more female-led films. Now that's not for any kind of social justice woke reason, that's because women are different to men, and having more female-lead films will inherently lead to different kinds of characters and storylines, which simply makes for a more interesting Hollywood. However, it is because of the fact that women and men are different that I hate the way Hollywood has chosen to do this. Squashing women into men's roles in an attempt to make them somehow powerful is actually incredibly insulting, because it assumes that in order for women to be powerful and achieve status, they have to behave like men. It feeds into this feminist attitude that femininity is somehow diminutive and masculinity is what women should aspire to in order to be taken seriously. Now this is an attitude I hate and I'm constantly rallying against. Why do you think I dress like Mary Poppins half the time and Morticia Adams the other half? Because they are both exquisitely powerful beings while being unashamedly feminine. Look at her. I would die for her. I would kill for her. Either way, what bliss? Unhappy, darling? Oh, yes. Yes, completely. 
Now, I fully intend to see this movie because I love Men in Black, but if Hollywood really wants to have a stronger female representation in lead roles, it needs to be done contextually rather than pointedly. And that goes for all diversity in films. The reason I loved the film Crazy Rich Asians was because it was a cracking good story with great characters that just happened to be set in Singapore. Unlike Mary Queen of Scots, which pointedly cast non-white actors to play actual historical figures in the court of Queen Elizabeth I, which is ridiculous, because the director said that she refused to direct an all-white period drama. I am really, really hoping that Hollywood doesn't continue this trend of squishing women into men's roles for the sake of feminism because they are being so unwittingly insulting to women by doing so that it is almost funny. Quite a large social justice fail right here. Bonus topic. We have a bonus topic this week. Singer superstar Miley Cyrus has unwittingly got herself into a spot of bother with, of all things, her innocuous criticism of rap music. In 2017, Miley did an interview with Billboard about her new album at the time and explained what pushed her out of the hip-hop scene a bit was the lewdness of its lyrics, stating that the emphasis on money, women and sex was just not her. Now this is fair enough criticism, I would have thought. The common theme in a lot of hip hop and rap lyrics is derogatory remarks about women and their subservience to men sexually. I'd imagine that that would certainly not appeal to Miley given her feminist leanings. However, recently a YouTuber named Kenya Wilson made a video stating that Miley's comments from two years ago were racist. Kenya said that it wasn't the right thing to say and that it was bad and it was racially insensitive and it had racist undertones and that it wasn't okay. Anyway, Miley saw the video and has issued a characteristically groveling left-wing apology. I want to start with saying I am sorry. I own the fact that staying this pushed me out of the hip-hop scene a little was insensitive as it is a privilege to have the ability to dip in and out of the scene. I cannot change what I said at that time, but I can say that I am deeply sorry for the disconnect my words caused. Simply said, I messed up and I sincerely apologize. I'm committed to using my voice for healing, change and standing up for what's right. Okay. Am I missing something here? But when did it become racist to say you stopped liking a particular genre of music? Just because hip hop is made up of largely black artists does not mean it is racist to criticize it. Neither is it racist to criticize black culture, particularly when that culture has some apparently objectively toxic elements to it, if we are to pay attention to a lot of rap lyrics. And let's be real, if it were white men uttering some of the lyrics about women that you hear in black hip hop, there would be hell to pay in the mainstream media nowadays. Simply put, Miley should not have apologized. She did nothing wrong, and if you apologize to social justice warriors like Kenya, it only encourages them. There's no rule to say that if she doesn't like hip hop, she can't say so. It is beyond arrogant to accuse her of being racially insensitive for something like this. Enormous social justice fail on this one for sure. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.